So I think Hell might have froze over because the amount of passion I'm seeing from already the beginning of Core 2 of Season 2 of Tower of God, it almost feels like a fever dream. And it's going to sound silly, but honestly, go compare opening 1 and ending 1 with ending 2 and opening 2. Whether you like the songs in both or one over the other, you would be hard pressed to find a majority of people who would say that opening one and ending one's visuals were more soul filled than the second batch. I was not a fan of how they directed most of Core 1, and I honestly think the opening and ending visual, the ending visuals of the first Core were the most boring freaking ending visuals I think I've seen all year. They were just, they were soulless. It felt corporate. The opening too, there's animation in the opening that has me freaking excited, which I didn't think was possible. And I'm saying, you better show me that Wagnon animation because I swear to God, if he's a slideshow or something, when it actually comes to that moment, I'll be salty. The ending visuals are this stylistic, almost want to call it a masterpiece. I would not be shocked in the slightest if they prioritized Core 2 over Core 1 this whole time, and the Workshop Battle Arc was what most effort was put into. It wouldn't be the first time I've seen it. Hell, literally Slime Season 3 was better produced in its second half than its first. It feels good, but I didn't think I would ever come up here saying that Season 2 of Tower God is now worth watching. But it absolutely is. I have full live reactions over on Patreon if you want to see my full and good thought to any of these episodes over there exclusively. Uh, I did watch episode 13 last week, I was just busy, but honestly, there wasn't a whole lot to discuss, but if you do want to see my full thoughts on 13, it's over on Patreon. Uh, but we're talking about episode 14, that's the bread and butter, and honestly, I'm excited. I, I really am. It's why it was always frustrating when, you know, it wasn't like there was a lot of people really defending season 2. If anything, for a while, I had more of a positive voice on season 2 than many online. But when it started to really crash out, and it basically looked like a PowerPoint presentation and honestly was giving me Newgate vibes in terms of how some of the visuals were looking. You got to criticize that stuff. You can't just say, oh, I'm a fan of the story, so I just have to. No, it's like, it, it's okay to point out when something's garbage. And if you didn't think it was garbage, that's fine too. Yeah, you had a different opinion. But, you know, when the arc was boring, the characters, for the most part, the new ones just were, they were falling flat on their face hearing about how much, you know, development was getting cut out. Just the fact that, like, you didn't really care about them, or at least I know I didn't, and it really didn't seem like it was an unpopular opinion. Reintroducing characters we already really like. In Dorsey, we have Anak, we have, of course, you know, Kuhn. I mean, Wagnon was a cool character, and there was a couple of new ones that were cool. And yes, I understand, Tower God, constantly new cast of characters. But if you're gonna have a new cast of characters that completely overwrite the old cast, you best make them at least pretty close to the enjoyment, and they gave us, like, a, a babysitter and a child and, and some Hot Topic kids. Like, it, it just... It wasn't it. I'm, I'm sorry. And the night and day difference of having a character like Kuhn interact with the new cast versus someone who had to, like, shut off his emotions and play pretend is just a night and day difference. The idea of Kuhn pulling the gun and making Wagnon wet himself and have that genuine fear of I'm going to get shot in the head so that people would come rushing in and they could grab the two extra bullets. Such a cool thing, and while you could definitely see how if the roles were reversed with Bam doing it, you would still have something similar, but it wouldn't have been nearly as fun because Bam, you know, acting as Vi Viola, just ending up just not really showing a lot of emotions or, but with Kuhn just having an absolute blast doing it. It just feels like while I'm not saying this episode in its entirety is a massive visual jump, it's a lot more consistent, it's more expressive, I will add, and honestly, I feel like there's passion, and I think it's probably a dual thing. One, there are some people that I've seen in my comment section, on Reddit, on different platforms that did enjoy the previous arc that was adapted in the webtoon, but I've also seen quite a few say it honestly wasn't that crazy even in the webtoon. The workshop battle arc is what you you kind of read through that to get to this. So at the end of the day, I kind of feel like we ended up in a situation where it probably should have gotten more passion, but it's just the unfortunate thing that maybe it's just one of the weaker arcs and 
stuff that comes after is just much better. And the thing about it is, is even if I don't agree with this mentality, a majority of the internet does have the mindset of how something starts and how something ends is the thing that remains on their brain the most. So if the workshop battle truly is good, if not great, maybe they'll even pull off amazing. If it ends well, there will be some excitement for season three again, even if the first half of season two, for the most part, people just didn't really vibe with, if not straight up hated. And that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, like there's obviously still going to be worry because this this second core needs to really just nail it and prove to us that Tower of God can still be the show we know and love. Because whatever your opinion is on the previous arc, whether you love it, hate it, loved it in the webtoon, hate it, webtoon, whatever it is, production-wise, it was complete ass, and no one can deny that people saying that this is essentially the Korean One Piece deserved a better production than whatever the hell we got in Core 1. Now, if they give us what I saw in this episode for the rest, I still think Tower God could probably do better, but this is the type of visuals you won't see me nitpicking too much. Like, you can nitpick, you can say, oh, they hold on to shots where they're running through the forest and they just show trees, the same trees moving across the screen to imply animation. You could nitpick that, but when the episode in general is pretty expressive, well-produced, and there isn't a lot of inconsistency with character models, there's a couple, but nothing too extraordinary, I'm quite happy with this episode. And the idea of the bullet game was pretty cool, so everyone gets a gun with one bullet, bunch of different rules and honestly it's just to compare this event to the one at the start of the season with like essentially hide and seek go go steal some shit from people it's just i don't know it's just a night and day difference if you ask me in terms of entertainment and i really enjoyed this episode i didn't think it was impossible but i thought at best i would eventually start coming up here again and say yeah it's it's pretty fun but man i still got a lot of issues i currently don't there's been a few episodes now in a row that has gone from like if you rewind four or five episodes back one of the worst produced and just poorly executed episodes i've seen all year and then after that episode they just started to climb i'm going to assume they just prioritized the workshop battle arc because if you watch the trailer, uh, Crunchyroll released a video, it's like a minute long or something, of like a, a teaser of this arc. It looks like two to three times better produced than anything we got in the previous arc. And it's not off, it's usually anime production goes down as we get more episodes, not go up. So that's the only thing that explains it to me. Or just they did a they did a line of cocaine and somehow they just they're, they're making the magic happen at the studio. I don't know. Let me know what you're feeling, though, of this season now. Um, let me know, because I think we've been on a steady incline, but maybe, you know, bridges have been burned for people, or maybe you've been enjoying it from the whole season. Let me know what you're feeling about season two, because honestly, hell feels like it froze over for me, but I'm definitely back in Tower of God greatness, and if I don't like it, I'll criticize it, but if I do like it, like I have been, I'm gonna give it the praise I think it deserves. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around you, of course, ring that bell, and like I mentioned, full live reactions over on Patreon, and hey, while you're over there, I'll just give you a video shout out. Alright, so today we got Cody Tiffany, Gled, Tiara is Grace, Tano Plays, Ryan49, Kantoa, and we also have Torvac, so I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and y'all have a good one.